Um, so John, what are you going to display to the fourth graders here today? Sure. So I, I think uh, this program is extremely, um, it has a big input, impact on the students. So they actually come here and they actually see hands-on what it means to be part or participate in agriculture. And I think it's a field trip that they'll probably remember for the rest of their lives. And it's a great program because they go from station to station to station and it's hands-on and they'll learn a lot. And uh, so consequently, it's a wonderful program. I'm really glad to be part of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, what are you going to be learning here? Yeah, because right? well, oh, yeah, okay. you have a really interesting okay. setup here. So, so essentially, you know, one of the, the most important aspects of agriculture, of course, is weather. Has it rained or not rained? What's the temperature? Uh, you know, not only are, are degree days extremely important, but for a lot of crops and fruits, also, is it cold enough at night? Let's say for cherries or, or apples or that sort of thing, um, like the grown Sea Canyon. So, weather is a hugely important aspect about agriculture, and especially now, uh, you know, we're in the second year of a drought, and water has always played an important role in agriculture, but as we move forward, it's even playing a greater role. A lot of people don't realize that we actually got 14.7 pounds per square inch pressing down on us, right? Mm -hmm. You don't realize that because the, the body or the air pressure within our bodies is the same as the air pressure outside of our bodies, right? Mm -hmm. so, but if you did create a vacuum, and one way to demonstrate that is, um, is using a, a tin can, aluminum can, and we have some water that's boiling in the bottom of this can. And what that's going to do is it's going to displace the nitrogen and the oxygen with water vapor, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Because our atmosphere is 21% oxygen, 78% nitrogen, 1%, this all kind of the mixed the gases, mixed up, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And, you know, generally speaking, you know, water vapor makes up less than one, you know, tenth of 1% of our atmosphere, depending upon what the humidity levels are doing. So it's really small. So what you do is you displace the nitrogen and the oxygen with 100% with water vapor, right? So um, what happens is that when we take this can that's filled with water vapor, mm -hmm. so it's it's water and it's gas phase, and then we turn it into this into this ice bath, all that water vapor is going to instantaneously um, condense into liquid water, and will almost pull a perfect vacuum in this can. Oh wow! So when you do that, the can's going to crush because the atmosphere is going to crush it, right? Uh -huh. So if you took the, the total surface area of one of these cans and multiplied by 14.7 you know, pounds per square inch, mm -hmm. it's about 700 pounds of pressure on each can, believe it or not. We just don't realize that, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so here's a little demo on this. So I, I had to turn this thing up to get the water boiling again. Yeah, no, definitely. Okay, so I know here we go. So watch what happens. Woo, that is so cool. <laughs> so that's uh, that what happens when you have 700 pounds of pressure uh -huh. on, on a tin can. So that's just one way to demonstrate, you know, how much pressure is really on, on the well, surface. Another way to do that mm -hmm. so is that um, to demonstrate that is here's just a, just a rubber you know, one, you know, one square foot piece of rubber, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> put on a table like this, and of course I could pull, you know, every bit of it like this. You know, and this is probably not the best surface, but I think, yeah, it's working okay. So, you, you know, there's, there's a hundred, you know, it's 12 inches by 12 inches, so there's 144 square inches on there, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And which means that you take 144 multiplied by 14.7, I mean, you're pushing 2,000 pounds, right? Yeah, uh -huh. But you never realize that, because I get to pick this up like this, and no worries, mm -hmm. but when you try to push straight up on the atmosphere, you can really feel that pressure, uh -huh. right? So that's sort of what, what demonstrates that. Another way to look at it is, um, here's, a, here's a balloon that I just blew up, right? Mm -hmm. But you can see inside it, Yeah. right? Uh -huh. um, but as soon as I release this little plunger, then you got that 14.7 pounds per square inch that's just going to collapse the balloon, right? Wow. So th there you Ooh, go. Uh -huh. And the same thing, if, if I put this plunger in here, let's uh, blow it up again. And there you go. Even though there's a mm -hmm. big honking hole in there, because there's no, the atmosphere is not pushing down on this, it stays inflated within this little glass sphere. Uh -huh. so as soon as you pull the plug, of course it deflates because you got that 14.7 pounds per square so inch. Here we go. Level. So I'm going to put this little piece of, 
of uh, cotton right in here. See the little piece of cotton right there? Mm -hmm. So um, it's also used to demonstrate how a diesel engine works, but I use it for weather, right? <laughs> so, so believe it or not, just by compressing the atmosphere, because people always wonder, well, okay, when we have an area of high pressure over us, over us why does the uh, temperatures increase? Why is it so beautiful, right? Or especially when you're along the coastline and you have those Santa Lucia northeasterly offshore winds blowing, and it'll get really hot by the beaches and the coastal valleys because the air is being compressed as it's coming down the Santa Lucia mountain, Western Grade, right? Yeah. Here's a little experiment. You know, for this cotton to combust, I mean, it's got to get you know over 700 degrees Fahrenheit or so. So just by compressing that air get this hot enough that that piece of cotton will actually combust, believe it or not. Oh my gosh. Do you believe that? I don't know. Or, or do you guys think I'm just pulling your legs? <laughs> I think you're pulling my leg, okay, and I can only imagine how a fourth grader would imagine. Okay, here we go. So, I should be... That uh, should be in the mouth. Well, we'll try it anyway. At least there's some smoke, right? Okay, yeah. here we go. See it? Oh my gosh. So this by air compression, that was able to, to light up, oh right? My will produce warmer temperatures, mm -hmm. but decreasing pressure will produce, um, you know, rain and mist and fog and cooler temperatures, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. It all deals with dew point, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here we go. So I'm going to compress this bottle, and this is filled up with a little bit of water. So we'll have you, we'll have you compress it. All right. All right. Haley, you ready? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to hold this down. So give it about maybe 20 minutes or so. Okay, you guys ready? I think it's about hard. That's, that's good, good enough. Okay, so um, what's going to happen is when I release this pressure, I will have a cloud in the bottle. Okay? Oh, that one, yeah, that was, I can see it. A little bit more. Oh, yeah, look at the right there. So there, there you go. So that's called cloud in the bottle. So that's, oh, that's what happens so when cool. pressure one diminishes. More. Okay. You get, you get clouds and cooler temperatures. When pressure increases, you have kind of the conditions that we're seeing right now. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Another kind of a neat little thing. Um, every morning from Danenberg Air Force Base, they launch a weather balloon. You guys ever seen a weather balloon before? I've seen a, I've, I've only seen a weather balloon in like uh, like textbooks. You know, oh, I've never sure. seen it. You know, in an act in real okay. life. But, you well, know, this is them all the this time is what one looks like. And about 4:30 in the morning, out of Danenberg Air Force Base, um, you know, the the squadron there, the Air Force uh, meteorologists will fill this up with helium. Mm -hmm. And it'll be like nine feet in diameter, pretty big, right? Mm -hmm. And they'll release it, and it will take this payload with it, which is called a radio song. And this radio song uh, transmits back to GPS data, so you know where the balloon's located at, which will tell you where the upper level winds are located, and what the upper level winds are doing. It's got a temperature sensor and humidity sensor. So you know what the dew point temperature is, you know what the temperature is, and you know what the pressure is, right? Mm -hmm. So once this thing gets up to about 100,000 feet, heck, it's, it's huge because there's so much less pressure. Mm -hmm. And this thing is, you know, maybe like 50 or 60 feet in diameter. Mm -hmm. I can readily see them from aircraft. And what happens is that the temperature is so darn cold at that altitude that this uh, latex just basically freezes and becomes very brittle. Uh -huh. And when it becomes brittle, of course, it finally pops. And it really shreds in like, I don't know, the best way to describe it is like little rubber bands. Mm -hmm. But the radio song will come down on a little parachute. And if you're hiking behind Lake Lopez, let's say the Los Padres um, wilderness area, sometimes you'll come across these radio songs from Vanderbilt Air Force Base. Oh, the ones that have dropped down? Yeah, okay. exactly. So, so do they have to use a, a new weather balloon every day? Every time. Every time? they got to launch a brand new weather balloon. Oh, Another thing we talk about, too, is... is um, how much more heat capacity that the ocean has in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So one way to demonstrate that is you just take a regular air balloon, you know, a balloon that's filled up with air, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you put a little, you know, it pops, right? Mm -hmm. You know, obviously it's going to pop. But if you had a water balloon, I right, see this one, yeah. <laughs> you do the same sort of thing, and it just doesn't pop oh, because the water is keeping that rubber cool enough where it doesn't doesn't rupture. Mm -hmm. So this shows that, hey, the ocean has 1,000 times more heat capacity than the atmosphere does. So if you want to look at the future of uh, climate change or global warming, it's really important or really smart to look at the what the oceans are doing by what the atmosphere is doing, because that's where most of the heat's going to. Mm -hmm. So there you go.
So with this and you know what you think, what do you think yeah. the future of agriculture will? I mean, I, I mean. Oh my gosh, what a what a what a great question. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it will remain the most important industry in California and probably in the United States. And uh, yeah, you look at the Salinas Valley; it's the salad bowl of the world, right? Yeah. You look at the Great Plains; that's really the the, the wheat bowl of, of the world. So uh, agricultural agriculture will remain vital, in, you know, for California's economy, and of course for the uh, for the country's economy. It's extremely important. So in all different aspects about that. But uh, look at our own county here with with uh, you know wine, and you know now we're seeing. A lot of ranchers doing organic and cert or, you know, certified organic mm -hmm. cattle uh, raising, mm -hmm. um, using what's called managed grazing or rotational grazing. Mm -hmm. um, there's just so many interesting crops and and uh, you know being developed and, and growing here. It's, it's always it's fascinating. Uh, That's really cool. That's really cool. So what are your views on agriculture education? I mean, what do you, do you think that? I mean, obviously. Today, yeah. you know, promoting that. Do you think well, you, you look at ag, agricultural engineering, right? Yes. And, and agricultural communications. Mm -hmm. I think agriculture is unique because it does take disciplines or it takes knowledge from all the different disciplines, right? Mm -hmm. Agricultural engineering, you got electrical engineering, you got mechanical engineering, you got civil engineering, you got hydraulics, you have irrigation, mm -hmm. right? You have business, statistics. It takes all those different aspects and combines them into one. Mm -hmm. So if you want to look at a classical education, right? Mm -hmm. Agricultural agricultural education combines all the different disciplines and all the different arts in, into one kind of tight box, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Because if you're a farmer or a rancher, you do have to utilize all these different, you know, studies and disciplines to, to combine them to make, mm -hmm. make your operation work, be it business. Via communication, which is so critical. I mean, you know, the older I become, I, I realize how important it is to have good written verbal skills. Right? It's absolutely crucial. And uh, you know, um, our chief nuclear officer, Diablo Canyon, um, has a master's in communications. And, and it's, it's, it's Thank you so much. Oh, Thank you. Welcome, Haley. You're welcome, Brian. Thank you. But